today we want uh, to learn together about the risk management system in the pharmacovigilance and uh, our objective is what is the risk management system what should be included in the risk management plan in the RMP and how to prepare uh, a RMP okay what is the risk management system it's a set of pharmacovigilance activities and intervention designed to identify characterize prevent or minimize the risk relating to medicinal products including the assessment of the effectiveness of those activities and interventions a set of pharmacovigilance activities and intervention designed to identify characterize prevent or minimize risk relating to medicinal products including the assessment of the effectiveness of those activities and interventions all of these will be a risk management system okay risk management understand uh, for the risk management we should understand the terminology of the risk management the risk management is include of the risk assessment and the risk minimization all of these together uh, will be determined the risk management assessment and minimization for the risk management plan or RMP we should have a detailed description of the risk management system the purpose of this is risk minimization or mitigation wherever possible we should have a risk minimization or mitigation wherever possible this is the goal purpose of our for the risk management is a global activity risk management is a global activity and the difference in indication and healthcare system and target population we have difference in disease prevalence and severity we have and we should understand this this is a risk every risk we should determine we should actually minimize all of the risk we have for the basic uh, components of a risk management plan we should characterization of the safety profile safety specification we should do and for that purpose we should have a planning of the pharmacovigilance activity and we should have a planning and implementation of the risk, uh, risk minimization and mitigation and assessment of the effectiveness of this activity and every step should be determined and have a SOP we should identify the risk and untoward occurrence for which there is an adequate evidence of an association with the medicinal product of interest how should we identify the risk any untoward occurrence for which there is adequate evidence of an association with the medicinal product of interest an adverse reaction adequately demonstrated in non-clinical study and confirmed by clinical data an adverse reaction observed in well-designed clinical trial or epidemiological study for which the magnitude of the difference compared with the comparator group on a parameter of interest suggested suggests a causal re relationship an adverse reaction suggested by a number of well-documented spontaneous reports where causality is strongly supported by temporal relationship and biological plausibility such as anaphylactic reaction or application site reaction 
these are the identify risk okay an adverse reaction adequately demonstrated in non-clinical study or adverse reaction observed in well-designed clinical trial or epidemiological study or adverse reactions suggested by a number of well-documented spontaneous reports is also a identified risk okay excuse me identify risk in clinical trials okay how we have identified risk we should identify the risk in our clinical trials for example we have an adverse reaction rosephine is uh, generally well tol tol uh, tolerated in clinical trials the following adverse reaction which were considered to be related to rosephine therapy for example rosephine is a um, generic name of ceftriaxone sodium local reaction is a pain in duration and tenderness was one person overall phlebitis was reported in less than one person after iv administration the incidence of uh, worms tightness or in duration was 70 percent 3.70 after I am administration of 350 milligram per milliliter and 5% 1.20 after I am. These are the identified risk. And what is the potential risk? But the potential risk is the an untoward occurrence for which there is some basis for suspicious of an association with the medicinal product of interest but where this association has not been confirmed this is a definition of potential risk there is some basis of suspicious of an association with our drug of interest but where this association has not been confirmed this is potential of the risk the potential risk is maybe toxicological findings seen in non-clinical safety studies which have not been observed or resolved in clinical studies adverse event observed in clinical trial or epidemi epidemiological studies for which the magnitude of difference compared with the comparator group plus the war activity substance or unexpected unexposed group on a parameter of interest raises of uh, raises a, a suspicious of what is not large enough to suggest a causal relationship a signal arising from a spontaneous adverse reaction reporting system an event known to be associated with other activity substances within the same classes or which could be expected to occur based on the properties of the medicinal product okay in the summary the potential risk may be a toxicological finding in non-clinical safety studies or adverse event observed in clinical trial or epidemiological study or a signal or a signal arising from a spontaneous adverse reaction report system or an event known to be associated with other activity or substance with the same class okay the other drug has this risk and we think okay maybe this drug also has this risk the potential risk example post marketing experience in addition to the adverse reaction reported during clinical trial the following adverse experiences have been reported during clinical practice in patients treated with rosephine data are generally insufficient to allow an estimate of incidence or established causes uh, a small number of cases of fatal outcomes in which a crystalline material was observed in the lungs and kidneys 
at autopsy have been reported in neonates receiving drosophene and calcium containing fluids. In some of these cases, the same intravenous infusion line was used for both rosefin and calcium containing fluids and in some um, precipitate was observed in the intravenous infusion line. At least one fatality has been reported in a neonate in whom rosefin and calcium containing fluid were administered at different time points via different intravenous line. No crystalline material was observed at autopsy in this neonate. There have been no similar reports in patients other than neonates. This is a potential risk. This is an example of the potential risk. Maybe it has a risk. A signal arising from a spontaneous adverse reaction reporting system, pharmacoepidemiology and drug safety to two. Uh, 2007 this is a report and published online in 70 august of 2007 in, in Vili interscience applying a quantitative methods for detecting new drug safety signal in pharmacovigilance national database mm, this is an article from dr gloria shalvi and dr Kazem mohammadi this is an article and this is a very good example article to well a study and to know of the example of a potential risk example and known from a signal arising from a spontaneous adverse reaction missing information information about the safety of a medicinal product which is not available at the time of submission of a particular risk management plan and which represent a limitation of the safety data with the respect to predicting the safety of the product in the marketplace. This is a definition of a missing information. Example of missing information include population not studied. For example, pregnant woman, or patient with severe renal impairment, we don't study this population in our clinical study, or where there is a high likelihood of off-label use, these are the missing information that we don't study in our clinical studies. Pregnancy and teratogenic effect. Pregnancy, category B, Reproductive studies have been performed in mice and rats at doses up to 20 times the usual human dose and have no evidence of embryotoxicity, phytotoxicity, or teratogenicity. In primates, no Embryotoxicity or teratogenicity was demonstrated at a dose approximately three times the human dose. There are, however, no adequate and well-controlled study in pregnant women because animal reproductive studies are not always predictive of human response. This drug should be used during pregnancy only if elderly, uh, elderly, uh, if clearly needed, non teratogenic effect in rats in the segment 1, fer fertility and general reproduction, and segment 3, uh, perinatal and postnatal studies with the intravenously administered ceftriaxone, no adverse effect were, not, were noted on various reproductive parameters during gestation and lactation, including postnatal growth, functional behavior, and reproductive ability of the offspring at doses of 586 mg per kilogram per day or less. Important identify risk and important potential risk. Unidentified risk or potential risk that could have an impact on the risk-benefit balance of the product or have implication for public health. This is a definition. 
what is the important identify risk and what is the important potential risk this is an identify risk or potential risk that could have an impact on the risk benefit ratio on the risk benefit balance of the products or have implication for public health important risk what is the important risk the impact that this type of risk this type of risk important risk has the impact on the individuals has the seriousness of the risk and has the impact on the public health normally any risk that is likely to be included in the contraindications or warning and precaution section of the product information should be considered important any risk that likely included in the contraindication warning or, or precaution this is should be considered as an important risk okay we should back again to the rosefin example or ceftriaxone sodium in the neonates less than 28 days a hyper um, hyper uh, bilirubinemic neonates especially premature should not be treated with rosefin in vitro studies have shown that ceftriaxone can displace bilirubin from its uh, binding to serum albumin and bilirubin encephalopathy can possibly develop in these patients. Rosefin is contraindicated in neonate if they require or expected to require treatment with calcium containing IV solution including continuous calcium containing infusion such as um, parenteral nutrition become of the because of the risk of uh, um, precipitation of ceftriaxone calcium and it has in parentheses see clinical pharmacology burning and dosage and administration a small number of cases of fetal outcome in which a crystalline material was observed in the lungs and kidneys at uh, autopsy have been reported in in neonates receiving uh, rosefin and calcium containing fluids in some of these cases the same intravenous infusion line was used for both rosefin and calcium containing fluids and in some uh, some a precipitate was observed in the intravenous infusion line at least one uh, fatality has been reported in a neonate in whom rosefin and calcium containing fluids were administered at different time points via different intravenous lines no crystalline material was observed at autopsy in this neonates there have been no similar reports in patients other than neonates precaution general prescri prescribing rosefin in the absence of a proven or a strongly suspected infection or a prophylactic indication is unlikely to provide benefit to the patients patients and increase the risk of the development of a drug resistance bacteria safety concern an important identify risk important potential risk or important missing information okay how should we do safety concern when we determine the important identify risk we determine the important potential risk we determine important missing information we do the safety concern important identify risk important potential risk and important missing information when we identify these risks we do the safety concern the principle of risk management the overall aim of risk management is to ensure that the risk benefits of a particular medicinal products or a series of medicinal products 
exceed the risks of the greatest achievable margin for the individual patients and for the target population as a whole as a whole this can be done either by increasing the benefits or by reducing the risk this is a principle when the overall aim of risk management is to ensure that the risk of the benefits exceed the risk of the greatest achievable margin this can be done either by increasing the benefits or reducing the risk increase the benefit and reduce the risk this is a principle of risk management risk management cycle first data collection Identifying and analyzing, evaluating, select and plan, implementing, and again this is a chain. Implementing, data collection, identify, analyzing, evaluating, selecting and planning, implementing, again, again, again. This is a cycle of risk management. RMP, risk management plan. Known and unknown issued in safety profile of the concerned medicinal products, level of certainty about the efficacy, the effectiveness of risk minimization. Okay, what is the RMP? The known and un not known issued in safety profile of the concerned medicinal products level of certainty about efficacy the effectiveness of risk minimization effectiveness the effectiveness of risk minimization we should determine the level of certainty about the efficacy we should determine how much we are certain and the all of the known and not known issued we should determine about the safety of profile not a not known issue in safety profile level of certainty about the efficacy and the effectiveness of risk minimization a structure of the rmp the part one is a product overview the part two is a safety specification and the part three is a pharmacovigilance plan Product overview, safety specification is a part two of the uh, risk management plan. Part three is a pharmacovigilance plan. Part four is a plans for post authorization efficacy study. In the RMP, we should have a plans for the post authorization efficacy studies. In the part five, we should have a risk minimization measures including evaluation of the effectiveness of risk minimization measures okay how should we evaluate the effectiveness and risk minimization measures it means evaluation of effectiveness of risk minimization measure in the part six we have a summary of the risk management plan and on the part seven we have an annexes these are the structures of the rmp rmp part one is a product overview okay what is the product overview active substances information active substance pharmacotherapeutic group atc code name of marketing authorization holder or applicant date and country of the first authorization worldwide if applicable date and country of first launch worldwide if applicable number of medicinal product to which this rmp refers These are the active substance information of the RMP. 
administrative information administrative information it's a part two no no these are again part one data lock point of the current rmp data lock point and date submitted and version number list all parts and modules of the rmp with date and version of the rmp when the part and modules was uh, last updated and submitted for each medicinal product includes in the rmp brief description of the product including chemical class summary of mood of action mood of action important information about its composition for example origin of active substance of biological relevant adjuvant or re residues for vaccines this uh, and we have also also include the indication dosage pharmaceutical forms and strengths whether the product is the subject of additional monitoring Now we go to the part 2 of the RMP, safety specification. Epidemiology of the indication and target population, non-clinical part of the safety specification, clinical trial exposure, population not a study in the clinical trial, post-authorization experience, Additional requirements for the safety specification, identified and potential risk, and summary of the safety concerns. Everything should be documented. Elements which might need, which might need to be incorporated. That is a quality aspect if relevant in a relation. Uh, to the safety and efficacy of the products the disposal of the product where it might pose a particular risk because of uh, remaining active substance for example patches disposal of the product and innovative pharmaceutical forms and also use with a medical device Population not studied in the clinical trials, for example, pediatric population, elderly population, pregnant or breastfeeding women, patient with hepatic impairment, patient with renal impairment, patient with other relevant or comorbidity, for example, cardiovascular or, or immunocompromised, including organ transplant patients, patient with disease severity different from the studied in the clinical trials, subpopulations carrying known or relevant generic polymorphism, and patients of different racial and or ethnic origins. Post-authorization experience, action taken by regulatory authorities and or marketing authorization holder for safety reasons. Non-study post-authorization exposure is a post-authorization used in populations not studying clinical trials, post-authorization of label use, and epidemiological study exposure is needed. Additional requirement for the safety specification are potential for harm from overdose, potential for transmission of infection agents, 
potential for misuse for illegal purpose potential for medication errors potential for off label use and a specific pediatric issue medical medication error of label use a specific of pediatric issue transmission of infection agent potential and potential for harm from other drugs okay what does it mean potential for medication error it means the wrong medication if we have a wrong dose including a strength uh, or for example wrong form wrong concentration wrong amount we should explain it the potential of this wrong route of administration or we have a wrong patient these are these are the potentials Identified and potential risks. Newly identified safety concerns. Recent study reports with implication for safety concerns. Detail of important identify and potential risk. And identify and potential interactions including food drug and drug drug interactions. And pharmacological class effects. Newly identified safety concerns, recent study reports with implication for safety concerns. Okay, identify and potential interaction between food drug and drug drug interaction. Presentation of risk data. Frequency, public health impact, severity and seriousness, reversibility and outcomes. Impact on the individual patient, effects on quality of life. Risk factors including patient factor, dose at risk periods, preventability, that means predictability of risk, whether risk factors have been identified or possibility of detection at an earlier stage which could mitigate seriousness, potential mechanism, evidence source, and strengths of the evidence. Heading, risk relating to the active substances, risk related to a specific formulation or route of administration, risk relating to the specific target population, and risk associated with switch to a non-prescription status. Summary of the safety concerns. Important identify risk, important potential risk, and important missing information are the summary of the safety concerns. Heading, safety concern relating to the active substance, safety concern relating to a specific formulation or route of ad administration, safety concern relating to the in target population and risk associated with switch to a non-prescription status. Risk minimization activity. Risk minimization measure. A public health intervention intended to prevent or reduce the probability of the occurrence of an adverse reaction associated with the exposure to a medicine or to reduce its severity should, uh, should it occur. Risk minimization activity. Okay, what should we do for risk minimization? A public health intervention intended to prevent or reduce the probability of the occurrence of adverse reaction associated with the exposure to a medicine or to reduce its severity should it occur. Modern pharmaceutical risk management, risk management example in the U.S. Uh, Vigabatrin.
Bilateral peripheral visual field constriction and approve, approved in the U.S. with the REMS. The goals of the REMS or risk, risk evaluation and mitigation strategy. What is the goals? To reduce the risk of uh, Vigo Botrin, its induced vision loss while delivering benefits to an appropriate patient population. To ensure all patients receive a baseline ophthalmologic evaluation, 50% of patients will receive this within two weeks of starting Vigo Botrin and 100% within four weeks. To discontinue vigabotrin therapy in patients who experience an adequate clinical response. Who discontinue? Who receive inadequate clinical response? Inadequate where? To detect vigabotrin induced loss as early as possible. To ensure regular vision monitoring to facilitate ongoing benefit risk assessment. To inform patient parents or legal guardian of the serious risk associated with the Vigo Bostrid, including vision loss and increased risk of suicidal through, uh, through uh, to social, social tough and behavior. Components of Vigo Bostrid, a risk evaluating management system, com communication to patients through a medication guide, and a communication plan directed towards healthcare provider. Their healthcare professional letter directed at ophthalmologic. Elements to ensure safe use is restricted distribution system, a special certification of prescriber and pharmacist, a requirement that we go bathroom be dispensed to patients with Evidence of safe use condition enrollment, enrollment of each patient using Vigobotrin in a registry. The patients or parents indicate that they have read the medication guide. The prescriber has explained the risk of visual loss. They, un uh, they understand that the visual loss is irreversible. They understand that prescribed vision, they, uh, they understand that prescribed vision assessment are required. They understand that periodic vision assessment is required for the duration of treatment and after treatment is discontinued, although it does not protect against visual loss. They understand that the response to vigabotrin will be assessed after short trial period and the patients with insufficient responses will discontinue using vigabotrin. An implementation system and timetable for submission of assessments is every six months. Risk management, conclusion, embracing change, and it's not the strongest strongest of the species that survive that survive nor the most intelligent but the one most responsive to change this is a sentence from charles darwin 1859 and this is this pdf has a second one also and we should uh, practice together the rmp also have a good time now bye from until the next video.